So our first presentation on Second Life for DC Locomotives is going to be by David Caron and Tom Chenoweth. Uh, David is with a, uh, ADB, Tom is with NRE. So we'll turn the speaker stand over to David. Oh, uh, one other thing too, as a reminder, if you have your cell phones, please turn them to vibrate. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Mr. The President, ladies, gentlemen, good afternoon. So it's my pleasure today to introduce uh, this uh, paper, so Second Life for DC Locomotive. So myself, David Caron, I'm account manager for ABB, uh, and I will be uh, with uh, Tom, Tom Shenwick from uh, NRE. So Tom will uh, be presenting on behalf of uh, Stephen Bill. <coughs> So let's talk about some statistic about the class one and the railroad in North America. We are about 561 freight railroads operating in the US. Seven of them are the class one, which represent 94% of the total freight rail revenue. There's about 23,000 locomotive in operation. 100% of them, 100 of them are diesel electric, so all of them. That represents 10 million gallon a day of diesel fuel consumed, which is 7% of all the diesel fuel consumed across the USA. So when we look at the fuels that as an expense, 23% is the, the fuel consumption of the class one. So playing with fuels, touching fuels have a direct impact. So when we're looking at the challenge of the industry, so moving more freight for less, on time service and reliable service as well, and greener operation. This is only some of the topics, there's many more. So what are the options today? Uh, the first option is going on the market, purchasing brand new locomotive, will deliver the lowest emissions, the latest, uh, the cost of, acqu uh, ac of acquisition is a little higher, and you're gonna get probably more power than you need. This is uh, the acquisition of a new locomotive. The other option is the retrofit opportunity. So reusing the assets that you guys have today, the class one, the class two, the class three, all the operators, so reusing your existing asset, upscale to the latest technology, reducing your emissions, with a minimum investment and all of that by delivering the performance of the latest model. Two different topics will be presented today. So the first one by myself will be the DC to AC conversions and the other paper, the other section of this paper, so IAC, so individual axle control presented by my friend Tom here. So when we say retrofit opportunity, so we're looking at the fleet, there's specific locomotives that are best candidate for such work. So we're talking about locomotives that are aged between 20 to 35, year, uh, 35 years old. If you look, this is the picture of the class one. Uh, that represents about 5,000 locomotives available for such conversions. 99% of them are have been built with a DC traction system. And we're looking for locomotive that requires a major overall. So a locomotive that is due for a, a complete rebuild. So the opportunity to convert at this time to a more efficient technology if there are significant reason to do so. And the reason is quite simple. It is a business case. It's a return on the investment on a business case. We're looking about specific objectives. What are the objectives that we want to do, what we want to achieve? So increasing freight demand. So we want to move more freight for less. We want to manage the energy, so green operation, consuming less fuel. We want to have predictable maintenance, so increasing availability of the equipment, managing the life cycle cost, and extending the maintenance period. And we want to take care about the new generation of operators so the cre creating the future railroaders and all of that by protecting the equipment on board the locomotive. So which lead to four words, 
reliability, maintainability, efficiency, and performance. That's the key. Out of those four words, there's two words that we're going to be more going more in detail today. Efficiency and performance, this is what leads the business case and which lead to a short return on the investment. Again, two papers, two, two, one paper, two sections in this paper. So AC traction, so we're talking about a new control system, new traction inverter, inverter so power electronic building block. So package in the high voltage cabinet, new AC traction motor, and uh, as an option, a new excitation system, which is package for an AC traction uh, upgrade. So if we're looking for an IAC uh, upgrade, so we're talking about a new microcontroller system, a new IAC motor controller, which is a chopper, and we are retaining, refurbish all the other equipment as the high voltage cabinet, excitation hardware traction motor. So the existing traction motor is reused. Again, we have the same goal, myself, Tom, we're going in the same direction, moving more freight for less. So let's go on my topic, let's go on the DC to AC conversion. Here this is an interesting slide that talks about the entire traction chain efficiency. So here on this side we have the diesel fuel that is in your tank, going to the diesel engine, going to the alternator, the rectifier. All of that, the entire chain, each of those components have losses. And the losses will give you a total traction chain efficiency. When we're saying AC traction versus DC traction, a DC traction chain will offer 82% of the efficiency. AC traction will be in a range of 87, which give us a 5% increase right away here. So it's a saving right away by DC to AC. When we say the system is regenerative, so this is another interesting feature of AC traction, is when your locomotive is braking, so instead of going in dynamic braking right away, so the system will send back the energy inside the converters, and this energy will be reused for internal needs, and it is ready for future as well. So if we want to bring super capacitor on board, we want to bring battery, we want to bring HEP, or passenger operation, we want to build an auxiliary device, so the system will reuse the energy internal, internally before going to the dynamic braking system. i show you a little later on, on the diagram, it is a different concept compared to uh, dynamic, regular dynamic braking. So each time the loco is braking, the power is sent back to the converter before being burned uh, by the dynamic braking resistors. So 5% increase, that's a big part of uh, the business case. So talking about the attractive effort, which will be um, part of the, uh, the business case as well. So the target locomotives today are giving you about 18 to 27% attractive effort. We want to reach the newest generation. So the newest generation is the 7084 uh, AC 4400 I mean, all the latest generation will deliver 37 to 39% easily. So we want to take the old asset and bring that to the latest generations. And how do we do that with AC traction? So here it is an SD40. So this paper has been built uh, in regards of an SD40, but we have to keep in mind this is fully applicable to any other type of locomotive, uh, diesel locomotive. This is not only an SD40 uh, models. Uh, so we're talking about new traction motors fit, form, and function, so three letters, F, 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 fit, form, and function, you remove the existing DC and you drop a new AC machine in the same hole. We're talking about the AC traction converter, which is high the high voltage cabinet, we're gonna see a picture later on, and uh, the excitation for the alternator, so we can keep what's there actually, and we can, or we can upgrade, so that's why we say here, it's optional. The goal, keep the 645, keep the existing engines, Keep the existing alternator, truck, cab, and frame. So the goal is to reuse as many old components as possible. Here on the left side, it's a typical uh, electrical schematic for an AC traction chain. So from the diesel engines going to the existing AR10, going in two different sections. Uh, the first block here, it's a voltage limiting unit. When I'm saying the dynamic braking operate in a different way. So the way the system works is when the traction motor breaks, 
So the power is sent back to the power electronic building block and feed back here to the DC bus. So when the DC bus, the voltage increase, the voltage limiting, the limiting unit will dissipate this energy to the breaking resistor. So some, some of the difference, comparisons between DC uh, and AC traction. So the traction uh, performance, so we want to maximize tractive effort as a function of available adhesion coefficients. Under track conditions, so in about 38 percent, uh, so <coughs> the tractive effort will be about 40 percent more than an old DC locomotive. In the slip conditions, the DC uh, traction motor will tend to run away versus the AC uh, traction motor will be limited by the applied uh, frequency. The braking, so full dynamic braking until zero mile per hour, no contactor, no switching required, and stator, stator frequency is controlled uh, during the braking. So this is a feature out of the converters. Size and weight, you have more power density in the same package. The know-how of this technology, as you can see on the right side, this is well service proven in North America. This is the figures from the seven uh, class one, so we can see that uh, AC has been used already a lot. So it's well, well approved and well recognized in North America. The maintenance, maintenance cost, AC motor require less maintenance compared to DC, so no brushes to replace, as an example. So the life cycle costs longer period between the scheduled maintenance, no commutator, brushes, reversing contactors, and the construction, we're talking about an AC traction motor which is stronger than a DC machine. No winding on the routers, so AC is just a simple router cage, copper cage, sorry. Here's some, some snapshot of uh, the traction motor and the gearing. So AC traction motor operate at higher RPM, so it is very important to match the right gearing ratio together. So optimizing for delivering the maximum performance by defining the operational requirement. Replacing the existing DC traction motor, so a fit existing truck without uh, major modifications. It's a design for YouTube mounting and uh, the air gap at the same location, so minimal uh, modification on board the local. And again, three key words, form, fit, and functions. The AC traction system needs a, a converter. It is key for the performance. Without the converters, there's no AC traction. So here's the picture. Uh, a 3D models of a 9 voltage cabinet with uh, all the power electronic block mounted inside. So we're talking about a very compact system. So it is an advanced uh, control uh, hardware, fast, smooth, slip slide control, modern and predictive diagnostic, an adhesion uh, optimizer based on best weather performance using advanced wheel creep features, boogie friendly vibration suspensions. Single axle control, one converter for one motor. So in case one converter fail, so we still have 83% more than 83% of the total performance. Why I say more than 83, so this dead traction motor, the power will be distributed to the other remaining traction motors. Fault current monitoring, advanced modification in pulse pattern to reduce losses in the traction motors, compact, lightweight design, and we're talking about liquid cool technology. So the goal is managing every kilowatt that is generated by a more efficient way. So the advantage of AC tractions, higher performance on the locomotive due, due to higher gear ratio, as I mentioned, the AC traction motor will operate at higher RPM. Single axle control for each motor has a dedicated motor inverter and degraded mode, 83% of the total power compared to 66 a person with a DC motor fail. The wheel diameter don't have to be matched uh, because of each wheel is drive independently. A 5% increase compared on the traction chain efficiency compared to DC traction chain and all the contactors and all the equipment in the high voltage cabinet that disappear. So again, again the goal delivering maximum tractive effort at every moment, pushing, pushing the wheels to the maximum multiple times per second. Here's a quick video where you can see there's a little dot and you can see the dot, the traction motor has been pushed. I can start again. 
So this is adhesion optimizer that we have with AC traction. So we're pushing the wheel to slip and we back it up. And we're doing that a couple thousand times per second. And this is the result of advanced wheel creep, wheel creep systems. Now, Tom, it's your turn. Thank you very much. Before we get started, um, when people talk about DC traction and DC locomotives, they're thinking of older technology, whether it's you know, Dash 2 locomotives, Dash 7, Dash 8 locomotives, even, even locomotives with microprocessors. Um, then we talk about AC locomotives, which have all these bells and whistles, traction inverters, um, wheel creep. Well, there's no reason any of those things can't apply to DC motors, and that's really what IAC is. It's AC traction with DC motors. So we're, we're doing essentially the same things with existing technology. So um, we tend to get a lot of questions about how IAC works. Everyone understands AC traction now. It's been around for a while. Uh, not a lot of people understand IAC. Um, what we do is we introduce a device between the existing circuits and the generator called a chopper, which boosts the current to the motors. What it does, it's just like an inverter, it's just got one sixth of the components. It switches on, connects the generator directly to the motor, and then it switches off, and the current continues to flow through the motor, and it does that hundreds of times per second, allowing you to instantaneously change the current or the voltage or correct for a wheel slip, getting the exact same wheel creep you can get with an AC traction system. The power in and out are the same, the voltage in is higher than the voltage out, and the current is lower than the current out. So it's a current boosting device. Um, talking about the improvement we get with tractive effort with IAC, um, as David said, older DC traction locomotives can get between 18 and 27% adhesion um, with the best microprocessor systems. AC locomotives can get 37 to 39%. IAC gets about 33 to 35% adhesion in normal service. Um, even an AC locomotive can be crippled into the 20% adhesion range if the rail is bad enough. Um, and we found that with IAC, um, when adhesion is a limiting factor, we're, uh, we're holding right up there with AC traction systems. Um, again, IAC surpasses all conventional DC locomotives and microprocessor controlled locomotives with adhesion. Um, in, in low speed service, whether it's uh, yard switching, a hump yard, um, even road switching, where tractive effort is key, it's your limiting factor. You're having to add more locomotives to pull the cars you need to, to pull. Um, IAC is, is king there. Um, you're able to actually reduce units in low speed service um, and move more with less assets due to the higher starting tractive effort capabilities in the system. Uh, you know, going to high speed service, you have to have horsepower. That's not what we're doing here. We're not saying you can create horsepower in the air. We're saying within the limits of the machine, as it is today, you can get up to 50% more tractive effort out of it. Um, talking about DC traction systems, how they work, um, the generator is connected right to the motors. When you start out, you're putting thousands of amps out of this generator. It's only when you get to very high speeds, you know, upwards of 50, 60, 70 miles an hour, where the generator is finally operating efficiently. Um, so below that speed, you're losing lots of energy to heat loss and you're burning fuel and not getting work done at the rail. Um, as you can see on the chart, you know, um, current is high, speed increases, it gets lower, voltage will increase with speed. It's not until up here where you're actually efficient. So in most areas of operation, you're getting less work done with the same amount of fuel burn. The SD40, which we're focusing on for this presentation, has an additional complexity transition. Um, you have two poorly efficient points. You have the stall area, and then at about 25 miles an hour, you make transition and actually change the way the motors are configured, and you have another area where your efficiency is poor. So with IAC, we get rid of all of that. Um, we run the locomotive and the generator exactly like AC traction. We feed the generator into a DC link. From that DC link, we use our choppers to regulate power to the motors. So that means our generator current at low speed 
only goes up with horsepower. We could be at one mile an hour and only have a few hundred amps out of the generator, and it's not until we're at full horsepower we get full current out of the generator, maybe only 2,000 amps. So at nearly all speeds below 60 miles an hour, we are more efficient than any DC traction locomotive out there. So that means that we're able to deliver more power to the rail, the same power from the engine, or we can deliver the same power to the rail and burn less fuel doing it. This is just an example overlaying the losses just in the generator from old DC traction to current systems. Um, in a GP locomotive, you have a thousand percent higher losses at five miles an hour at full power. On an SD40, you have 600 percent higher losses than an IUC locomotive at five miles an hour. And with our locomotive, whether it's a GP locomotive or an SD locomotive, you have the same losses in the generator. It's just determined by horsepower. So what that means is we're operating the generator at its most efficient point at all times, and again, you're able to do more with less, more, productive, more productivity with less fuel burn. So now that we're getting the meat of IAC and what it means you need to do. Um, with IAC, we're trying to be minimally invasive. Um, you have the option to change anything you want. If you want a new cabinet, a new console, a new cabinet, you can have it, but all you really need to do is apply a microprocessor control system and the choppers, and then make some cable modifications to tile that in, insert it between the generator and the existing equipment, and that's it. So we modify the area underneath the sub base with our chopper enclosures, three per side. We apply the microprocessor control system, and we connect our electronics to the existing switch gear in the electrical cabinet, and you're done. Everything behind that electrical cabinet remains the same. The motors are the same, the generator's the same, the engine's the same, you get the idea. So um, we can retain nearly all the existing equipment with this approach. So the technology, as I said, minimally invasive, air-cooled technology. Um, you don't have to manage any new cooling loops. Um, everything's already air-cooled, it's very simple. Um, Bolt-on packages are available with many locomotive types. Um, solutions tailored both to different locomotive uh, challenges. Um, the choppers themselves are optimized for EMT and GE traction motors. We're able to drive the motors with these choppers without introducing any additional losses or life cycle degradation. Um, with microprocessor, you gain significant real-time diagnostic tools and remote diagnostic tools. It makes it easier to troubleshoot. You can figure out what's going on very, very quickly without having to spend hours tracking down a simple problem. You keep your units in service longer, keep them out of service for shorter periods of time. And what you gain with IAC is state-of-the-art control. It's, it's as good as you can make a DC locomotive. Uh, Performance-wise, many of the same benefits associated with AC traction also exist with IAC. We can have one chopper per axle for maximum wheel creep. You're only making corrections to the axle that's slipping. All the other axles are not going to lose power when one axle slips. And they can actually increase power to the axles that aren't slipping, so you don't actually see any horsepower loss or speed loss during a minor wheel slip. Um, the slip corrections are instantaneous. An IGBT can turn off right now, and it's doing it hundreds of times per second. There's no decay time. There's no waiting for the generator to kind of stop doing its thing. It's slip, stop, start. Exactly what you saw in David's video. Uh, the adhesion is optimized with IAC without speed probes. We don't need speed probes to get 33 to 35% adhesion. Um, we're able to do this just by monitoring the voltage and current applied to the traction motors in our own. And uh, the microprocessor is able to detect what's happening. Um, speed probes can be used for locked axle detection where desired. Um, individual traction motor cutout is also possible. Uh, if you fail a motor, um, you retain more than 83% of your tractive effort and 100% of your horsepower. So effectively, you won't really see the difference with one motor in most operations. Uh, what's the advantage with IAC? Uh, you get higher performance from your existing assets. You're able to get higher adhesion um, with minimal change. Um, you're getting wheel creep. You're gonna get higher tractive effort in the case of motor component failures. Um, you don't have to precisely match your wheel diameters in order to get wheel creep, as long as they're within normal tolerances of operation. Um, you get increased efficiency. Um, at low and moderate speeds, even up to 50 or 60 miles an hour, 
you're always able to get more power to the rail from your generator. There's less power wasted as heat. Um, and you can retain all of your existing equipment that you're familiar with, all of your switch gear, all of your contactors. Um, you can buy the equipment you already have supply chains established for it. Costs that are visible to you that you understand and can pr project. Um, you know the maintenance costs of all your existing equipment. Um, and really what it boils down to with minimal change, you have minimal risk with retrofitting IEC. And in conclusion, I'll pass it back to David. Thank you very much, uh, Tom. So in conclusion to this uh, paper, so today's technology allows you to benefit from exi your existing assets by allowing upgrade solutions which will match the performance of a new locomotive at a portion of the cost. So reusing your existing assets should be priority over buying new. So as presented, different applications may drive to different solutions and therefore to different results. The result is the quicker you act, the quicker you act, the better will be your business case. Again, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, the new technology committee, uh, all the presentation, all the three present presentation of this afternoon will be available uh, on YouTube, so you can see this presentation at uh, any time. And now, um, is, there, is there any questions?